Welcome back to our Do More with Google Jamboard video series. And thanks so much to everyone who has left comments on the first video. It has been lots of fun to see all of the excitement and the clever ideas that everyone is sharing. This is part two of our series on Google Jamboard, the free digital whiteboard app that lots of teachers are using in their classroom right now. My name is Matt Miller. I taught in public schools for more than 10 years. And since then, I've dedicated my life to supporting and equipping teachers. I've done that through my Ditch That Textbook website, five books, and presentations and workshops that I've done all over the world, as well as through social media. Jamboard is a hot topic in education right now. Two of the four most popular posts on my blog are about Jamboard, and for good reason. It's an app that lets you engage your students, collaborate, and make learning very visual. And best of all, it is totally free. In our first video, we looked at some of the things that makes Jamboard special. For one, it doesn't require any special devices or hardware. You don't need the fancy Jamboard touchscreen monitors to use it. The Jamboard app is free. And in many ways, it's very similar to Google Slides and PowerPoint. A Google Slides presentation is made up of slides, and a Jamboard file, called a jam, is made up of frames. But Jamboard was made for visual learning, for brainstorming, for getting ideas on the page and then interacting with them. It's perfect for the hands-on digital learning that connects with so many of our students. And there's a lot we can do with it. And that's what today's video is all about. I'm going to show you my top three favorite ways to use Jamboard in the classroom. These are the kinds of things that you can learn about today and then apply with your students tomorrow. Are you ready? Let's dig in. The first way to use it is as a digital teacher whiteboard. Throughout my entire teaching career, I've always loved my whiteboard. Sure, I would use it for notes and to highlight what I was telling students, but I would also draw on it. I'd try to visualize what I was teaching so that students could see it clearly in their minds. A whiteboard has always been one of my favorite teaching tools. But what about when our face-to-face -face learning goes virtual? Or what if we wanna take those whiteboard skills to the next level, saving what we've written on them so students can access them later? and unlocking features that we can't use with a regular whiteboard in our classrooms. That's where Jamboard comes in. If we're teaching online, Jamboard can be that whiteboard that you miss from your face-to-face -face classroom so much. Just pull up Jamboard and share your screen on a Zoom call or Google Meet or whatever. It can help your students to visualize what they're learning. If you're teaching face-to-face, -face, Jamboard can give you more whiteboard space than you've ever had. Just pull up a Jamboard on a touchscreen device, like a Chromebook or a tablet, and put that same Jamboard file on a projector screen. As you take notes on your touchscreen, they're saved on that Jamboard file. And then if you provide students with a link to that file afterwards, they can access your whiteboard notes anytime they want. The second way is to use it as a digital hands-on activity. Many of us love to use manipulatives, you know, those materials students can put on their desk and move around with their fingers. Some people use sticky notes and index cards. Others use blocks and shapes. They help students make sense of what they're learning. Jamboard can provide a digital version of that experience. Plus, it can even help you upgrade those types of activities. Set up some digital manipulatives on a Jamboard frame. They might be some sticky notes that you want students to drag into place. They might be images, even moving animated GIF images that students can drag into place. They can even pull circles and arrow shapes on top of photos or artwork or diagrams to show what they're learning. Want to take it to the next level? Have students use a screen recording tool like Screencastify or Loom to record their screen as they move those manipulatives around. Students can talk through what they're doing and record their thinking in audio and in video. Talk about a big upgrade from a couple of sticky notes on their desk. The third way is to have students show their thinking visibly. Start them off with a blank Jamboard file. Students can brainstorm with sticky notes. And they can add images and text that almost look like a digital poster. They could add icons and text to build an infographic to show learning. And when they share a file that anyone can edit, it becomes collaborative. Everyone can work together in the same shared digital space, whether they're six feet apart or 600 miles apart. Ask yourself this question. 
how could students use text, images, and shapes to show you what they're thinking visually? When they do that, it's almost like we can peer inside the minds of our students. And when our students show us what they know in a very visual way, it gives us much more to work with than simple answers on a paper worksheet. Now, as you watch this, you might be thinking, I don't think this works for my students. They're just too young. Or you might think that your students are too advanced to use a tool like this. But that's the beauty of Jamboard. The user interface is really simple. If students can pull up a Jamboard file, using it can be as simple as dragging items into place. For younger students, everything can be done with pictures and colors and shapes, so words aren't even necessary. And with older students, Jamboard can be a great way to simplify the most complex subjects. When students see it visually and clearly, it helps them to remember, whether your students are in high school, college, or even adult learners. In the next video, we're gonna get even more practical. I'm gonna show you the three steps that it takes to make Jamboard templates. You know, the kinds of activities that you can assign to your students so they can do this very visual kind of learning. After watching this video, you will have what you need to pull up a Jamboard file, create one of these interactive activities, and then assign it to your students. Until then, let me ask you this question. I just gave you my three favorite ways to use Jamboard in the classroom. As a teacher whiteboard, as digital manipulatives, and for students to show their thinking visibly. How could any of this fit in your classroom? How could you use any of these ideas? Or if you're already using Jamboard, what has been working for you and your students? I'm very curious to see what your thoughts are. So I'll be looking in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.